One, the future could be like this, where we are literally drowning in data. That's kind of already, I think, some people already feel like, you know, constant notifications. Or we could become superhuman, right? Where we can reach the universe, right? No limit to what we can know. I mean, it's funny, you know, every second movie that's made in Hollywood these days has the same motif, which is that we become superhuman by plugging into the internet directly. I call the singularity. Right? Now, this is a very dangerous thought, obviously. Are they going to say, well, this is a machine calling you? And you probably hang up. Right? So it's an interesting angle. You know, I think, okay, could be amazing, useful, convenient, strange, creepy, confusing, dehumanizing. Hard to say. The jury is out on this, but I think we have to think about this. Everything that we do has to, in the end, make greater human purpose. So the typical example of how we're pushing the boundaries, like virtuality. Maybe it'll be so good that we don't even want to go without it anymore. And we're just kind of falling off the cliff there. And so that's a key question. How much technology is too much technology? When we use social media, they're sort of distracting us and could be perceived as good or bad. But in the future, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, the blockchain, genome editing, virtual reality. Well, oh, that's not the future, that's today. Right? It's here now. So we have to ask the question, right? Is it more important to have algorithms or is it more important to have relationships? Well, the answer, of course, it's both, right? I mean, we should not put algorithms over androgorithms, you know, human things. We should not always put convenience over consciousness. Machines don't do relationships, and relationships are 95% of what matters to us. So combining those two things will be very important. You know, it's a huge skill shift from the from the left brain, you know, the, the mathematics, the calculation, to the right brain, a skill shift the World Economic Forum has pointed out. The skills are shifting from 2015 to 2020, so critical thinking, creativity, uh, emotional intelligence, cognitive flexibility. If you have kids, or you're about to have kids, this is what they have to learn. What makes them more human. This is the key question under, underneath all of this. How computable are we? Is that the digital GERD? Right? Right? Is it possible to express ourselves in data? Are we just algorithms? I mean, it's interesting, when you ask that question in Europe, you get, you know, people are saying, oh no, I'm not this, just, right? But in China or in Silicon Valley, people are saying, yeah, maybe we're just technology. That is a question we have to answer eventually, you know, otherwise we can have these kind of situations uh, <laughs> where machines can give us good counsel, right? Or we can just get a download of the latest skills. Uh, that could be quite useful, as envisioned in many science fiction. If we're just data, then this is our logical destination. But here's the thing in the end. Human intelligence means a lot more than just numbers. Man and machine, woman and machine, are converging. And some people think it's a good idea if we also then become essentially technology. You know, we've heard the debates about singularity and the whole convergence of man and machine. I mean, who in this room does not want to be superhuman, right? I mean, that's kind of like we all think this is a good idea for us to, to gear up and become super powerful. Now in this evolution, we're going in this world from mobile devices to handheld devices to uh, maybe wearables and very soon brain-computer interfaces. I mean, many people talk about this and how long will it take for that to work? It's already working, uh, just too clumsy and too expensive. Well, Microsoft HoloLens is $6,000. It'll be $500 in two years and then maybe $100 and maybe free eventually. We've talked about these things some of them for 50 years, like artificial intelligence, 
didn't happen. We talked about 3D printing for 20 years now, not much happened. But now, you see takeoff, eh? escape velocity, as they say. I mean, it's funny, in the next 10 years, we're going to see things that are straight out of science fiction. 20 years, I mean, if you're my age, we will live to see what we call the singularity, the convergence of man and machine. Us mere humans, aren't we supposed to have knowledge and turn the data into knowledge? Isn't that what we do? And now machines do it. They're not doing it all that well yet, but you can imagine, right? Five to seven years, quantum computing, million times the capacity, endless sensor networks. We can get a machine with an IQ of 100,000, in theory. And that machine will be vastly superior to us in terms of calculation. I'll show you why that's not a reason to worry, really. But, I mean, it does make you think. If we have computers that have unlimited knowledge, what's the change for us? And we have to think about this. Do we want to collaborate with technology? Or are we going to end at a place where there are conflicts? And who decides? With great power comes great responsibility. Gardner just announced a couple days ago in the research organization, Gardner, that digital ethics is the number one topic for 2019. You'd be surprised because when you're in the tech business, you're saying, okay, uh, as Bertolt Brecht once said, dinner first, then morals. Right? I mean, it's very hard to sell ethics. Right? It's not a product. It's even harder to sell humanity. But now companies like Microsoft and many other companies are saying it's very important for us to do the right thing with technology. Because in theory, very soon, we can do anything. Here's a key question. And given that we're talking about you're not far from Silicon Valley, who will be mission control for humanity? Who decides? Right now, this is a minor issue, or is somewhat of an issue, right? because most of it is not really working that well yet. We don't have perfect AI, we don't have the perfect IoT, we don't have 6G networks, we don't have quantum computers yet. But they're right over there. So this is a key question. How do we control and how do we figure out what's good? And the best example is Facebook. Gunning at democracy. Thank you.